Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, my name is Slavio Pereira, I'm part of the Technical Enablement. This is the part four uh, of Compute Lesson 200 level. So now we're gonna talk about Instance Console Connections. All right, so what exactly is Instance Console Connection? Um, so think about it, if you deploy a um, compute instance um, in OCI, and then the way you can access the instance, especially if you're using the public um, IP, is through an SSH, right? So you have to provide an SSH key uh, if using uh, the Linux environment. Uh, and then once, once you deploy that instance, you can access um, um, the instance using the terminal. You can do an SSH to the public IP and then you get access to the instance. Right, so but think about if something happens with that instance. If there, for some reason you have a, a problem, where you probably lost the SSH key, uh, or you put the wrong SSH key at the moment you launched an instance, and now um, suddenly you cannot access that instance anymore, or you might have some you know firewall configuration that prevent you to access that instance through the network. Uh, so you wanted to understand what's happening, what, what exactly um, happening with that instance. And you don't want to reprovision, you don't want to you know, uh, go through the, through the process of creating a new instance uh, just to um, resolve that problem. So we actually have the instance coastal connection, which give you the possibility of connecting to the instance uh, through a serial console. Uh, basically, it's a serial console that you're going to connect through it uh, and, and then gain access to the boot process and be able to do some uh, operating operations inside of the, the instance, if you do, if in, even if you don't have the network um, configured correctly or if you don't have network access to the instance okay so this is actually what instance connection is and how you can uh, uh, use that to uh, fix any problems that have happened inside of the instance to troubleshooting any any issue uh, to fix some boot volumes that you know was uh, wasn't uh, placed on the right uh, on the right uh, configuration with the right configuration so you're gonna have you can have instance console connections to fix that kind of that kind of problem Okay, uh, so just to give an overview of the command. So once you create an instance coastal connection for your instance, uh, you're gonna perform an SSH, which is kind of like, well, you know, uh, I don't have, you're telling me that I, I used to use SSH to access the instance, but now you're gonna use SSH to connection to serial console. Yes, this is true. So when you do an SSH, you actually point it out, not to the public IP of the instance, but you actually point it out to the instance console connection uh, OCID and that instance console connection which is a service inside of OCI will redirect your connection to the VM where you want uh, to get access to it right and then through that you're going to gain access to a different uh, serial port right so you're not going to go through the uh, regular network interface but you're getting access through uh, the serial console okay as you can see the SSH is on the on a SSL port on the 443 so it's a it's a secure port um, and only when you created the, the instance connection for that instance you can use to do that and after you're done the, with the, all the troubleshooting steps and everything you can delete that inst the, the instance console connection so nobody can uh, use that after after you delete okay so uh, this is uh, how it works uh, um, how you create right and this is just one example when you do an ssh i'm doing an ssh to a specific um, console connection i'm going to get access to the screen where it's going to give me the login prompt right uh one of the the questions that we got a lot is like well now i have a, a login um uh, prompt and i don't have a user right that's true you don't have a user when you when you create another the, the the instance you only provide the ssh key which is associated to the user opc so you actually have a user but you don't have a password right you actually don't have a password to to get access to that um and that's totally fine uh, i'll show you in a demo how you can get access to the instance even if you don't have the uh, the password so you'll be able to reboot the instance and then get access to that so let me show you uh, on a quick demo how that works all right, so here I, here I am on my OCI account. I'm gonna go give you a demo of how you connect to the instance console connection, how you create that, how you get access to your instance. So let's go on the menu uh, and then select one of the compute instances that I have up and running here. So if I go here, I can see I have two instances. I'm gonna pick this VM1 uh, and I do have a public IP that I can do an SSA to it. 
but if I go and scroll down all the way on the resources, I have a console connection. So I can click on console connection and say create console connection. So when I click create console connection, it's going to ask me to provide an SSH key. Okay. So remember, if you lost your SSH key, you can create a new one. Uh, an input right here. So that SSH key doesn't have to be exactly the same SSH key that you used when you provision the instance. It can be a totally different SSH key uh, file, okay? So uh, I'm gonna browse here, just get one of my uh, SSH keys. Uh, and I'm gonna get one of my Let's just put it over there. Create console connection. And this will, um, create um, a console connection for us. So it's active, right? It shows the OCI ID of that console, the instance console connection. So now if I go here on the action button, I can even, I can you connect with a VNC. If I have a VNC client, I'll be able to use the instructions on how to connect to a VNC. So I can use the VNC, the VNC client to actually see um, my instance. Uh, but I'm using a, a MacBook here, so I can use the SSH portion. I'm going to click on Connect with SSH. So when I do that, um, if I want to do through Windows, I'm using Windows machine. Uh, I want to use PuTTY or uh, using the using the PowerShell, so I can actually use those commands to get access to the instance. So I, what I'm going to do is select the first one. I'm going to copy, just click Copy here, and then I can open up a terminal. And I can just um, same paste the uh, command right here. Okay, so as I was saying in the slide before, I'm doing an SSH to uh, OCI D of my instance console connection, and then actually redirecting the connection to my my instance OCI D, right, which is the VM01. So if I hit Enter, uh, and you're gonna get this, like you you're gonna say yes, I wanna I wanna connect. And then nothing happens. It's just like you got this screen. There's nothing. There's no action here. So what you have to do is just press enter or any you know key key uh, stroke on your keyboard, and then you're gonna have access to the login prompt. Okay. So then everyone's like, well, now I want to do an o I want to try to log in. Just type the user. OPC is usually the the yeah, the default user, and then you don't have a password, right? So you don't have a password to type here and get access to the instance. So what do you, what do you do next? Okay, so let's say you have a problem and you connect that way and now you want to you know, get, get access to the server and then understand what happened uh, and then do some troubleshooting steps there. So what you can do is you can simply go back to the console. You can keep that terminal up and running. You can go back to the console uh, and, and you can go here on actions and just say, oh, sorry, you can go in here and just say stop. I want to stop the um, uh, machine or even reboot. So let's just let's just reboot the machine. I'm going to reboot the machine and say, okay, uh, I want to reboot it. So when saying it's stopping, I can go back to the terminal and now I can see the stopping um, um, boot process uh, happening, right? So it's powered down right now, the machine, and you're going to see it's going to, it's going to start showing you the starting uh, portion as well. So let's just give you a few minutes. That's going to show up. Um, the machine is you know, will, will boot up. There you go. So here on that screen, and that's where you have to be really uh, faster here. Uh, as you can see, was this was showing the the kernel uh, of my Linux, of my Oracle Linux that will be booting on that machine. So now I just I just press uh, a keystroke on my keyboard, uh, the arrows, and then I can change. Um, I can change between kernels here, right? So I'm going to use the first one, which is the default, the unbreakable one. But I can, as you can see, there's some information here on the bottom. You can say press E to edit uh, and uh, know this item, this kernel line. Uh, and then I'm going to do that. I'm actually going to press, uh, um, press uh, I here. So let's just uh, edit. And then I'm going to go here all the way to the Linux um, line, which is the Linux um, UFI, and I'm going to type uh, init equals slash bing bash. Okay, so when I enter that parameter on a kernel line, and now I can press Ctrl X to restart, what's going to happen is uh, I'm the machine will start, but will give me a prompt. And this time, as you will see, 
it's not going to give me any logging screen, right? There you go. So now I'm actually inside of the my instance. So if I type ls, for example, I can see all the file systems here. Okay, if I go to slash home opc, so I can uh, see all the files here. If I go to .ssh, for example, I can see my authorized keys, right? I can see the key uh, available here, and then I can uh, change that file and inject a new SSH key on my on my server. Right, so now I can do all the type of uh, troubleshooting, um, you know, that I want. I can check my var log and just check the log files to get more information about any problem that happened uh, before. So as you can see, you don't have to create a, a password for a user, right? As long as you enter the right command on the kernel line, you'll be able to gain gain access to the instance and then do some troubleshooting. Um, uh, steps here inside of the inside of the machine okay uh, once you're done once you're finished uh, you can simply um, reboot the box uh, you can just close that terminal here and reboot it one more time and then once you do that uh, the machine will come back to uh, to the normal again all right so this is the demo hope you like it um, stay tuned for the next lesson thank you